And we are back with The Chosen Journey with Big Money Grip, Steve Carse, and The Chosen Lawyer. And today's a big, big episode, Steve, because if you were pulling on that jersey behind me and that hat, and you were going to get ready today for spring training, because it's coming really soon, by the way. It's only a couple weeks or so away from this uh, launch of this episode. So yes, you would have a lot of homework to do, my friend, as a coach, because Major League Baseball has come over to you and the other coaches and the teams and said, there's a lot of changes this year. We need to get you to get the players up and up on where things have gone. So in the genius, and I use that term loosely, a major league baseball, they decided the game needs to be involved a little bit. And we're going to look today at the big three rule changes coming into the 2023 MLB season. Uh, before we get into them, Steve, uh, the first question for you, when you hear a new change coming down the pipe, do you, what's your mini reaction generally that you're like, I'm excited. This is great. The game is evolving. Or I'm like, why are they getting, why are they changing? What's not broken? Or I like the tradition of the game. How have your feelings been as they come and announce these tweaks every year, pretty much? Yeah. I, I guess the first thing that pops into mind is what is the change? What are they trying to do? What are they trying to accomplish? Um, and then have they, have they actually, uh, tried this out somewhere before, before implementing something that they don't know that, might even work. So, you know, these changes that we're talking about, um, you know, they're ones that have been implemented in the minor leagues. They're ones that have been tested out and they feel like there are ones that are going to change, uh, you know, the dynamic of baseball in for the better uh, with, with, with these changes coming and the players uh, who come up through the minor leagues have already been introduced to these changes. So, uh, as radical as some people might think that they are, they're not as bad for the players because they've adapted to them in some sort of fashion. Well, we'll go one by one. There's three big ones I want to talk about today. You know, the one that I'm still, I wanted to abolish the DH, Steve Carsey. I love the, the NL game and the whole game within a game. And you have the pitcher coming up, and he's pitching really well. It's a sixth inning, seventh inning, but you got guys on base. It's a close game. You bring in the pitch hitter. What do you do? And, man, you know, uh, they went and shifted it. And you know what? I've lived with it. I miss the NL-style game, but I get it. They do have the Shohei Otani rule because you got to have that. But uh, looking back on that rule, for example, did you think that worked out pretty well? I like the rule. Uh, to be quite honest with you. Uh, the one thing I dislike about the full DH in both leagues uh, is that it takes some strategic maneuvering away from the managers. Do I have to pull my pitcher in the fifth inning because he's coming up third with first and second and nobody out? Or uh, do I let him bunt or let him hit and then let him roll and continue to pitch in the sixth and seventh inning so I can save my bullpen? Um I think the benefit to that is that if you don't have to make that move, you don't have to get relievers up and down. So it, it saves the health of their arms a little bit more. If you want to make a change, you get a, you get a reliever up and you can put them in the game because you know that once the pitcher is running out of pitches and his pitch counts are getting too high, I can make the change and, and I can protect the player's arms a little bit more in the bullpen. So uh, overall, I like the move uh, for the fact that it's a, uh, more of a, a health thing. Plus, it's more beneficial for players because if you add another 15 more DHs in the league, it brings up the value of that position. Love it. Well, you make very good, strong cases for it. So first rule, and I would say this one is the one that really was uh, worrying me with the WBC, is the pitch timer, the new pitch timer. Because in WBC, it's going to be under the old pitch rules. And now, you know, players that are in spring training are going to be having to do these practices for pitch timers. And apparently, Buck Showalter has got all this ready for the New York Mets pitchers that they're going to be working on pitch timer counts throughout spring training. So I'm sure they're overjoyed about that. So 30-second timer between batters, between pitches, 15-second timer with bases empty, 20-second timer with runners on base. So... Reduces the average time of a game in the MILB by about 26 minutes. So they're hoping to shave off about half an hour, give or take. Uh, also, the limits on throws to first base. What do you think about this whole pitch timer thing? Have you gone through it? And what do you? Uh, what's your feeling on it? Like you being, if you were a bullpen coach, a pitching coach, uh, how hard is it going to be get guys to adhere to this? I don't think it's going to be really hard. Uh, I was uh, the AAA 
pitching coach for the Indians in Columbus, and we had to, you know, work under the pitch timer rules. Um, it didn't really affect the pitchers uh, with uh, how many seconds that they were able to get. They work at a little bit quicker pace. Um, if I had to figure out, it might affect maybe 5% of all of the pitchers in the big leagues, because most guys like to get the ball and do that. Uh, obviously nobody wants to ever be rushed uh, when they're in the mound in a key situation, but I think guys will adapt to it really well. And like I said, a lot of these guys who have come in up through the minor leagues have already been implemented in this and understand what they do. So they've already changed their routine and, and they're going to be, it might be a little bit for the older players like a Verlander or the Grom who's never had to work in the minor leagues through a pitch clock. Uh, but I, I just don't see it affecting these guys as much as people might think. Because you have batters that are going to get hit with an automatic strike, a pitcher hit with an automatic ball if they uh, violate the clock. So is the clock going to be in, a, in several places in the ballpark so the pitcher can see it very easily, the, the hitter can see it? Because even say here, the batter must be in the box within eight seconds or charged with the strike, you know, things like this. Uh, they kind of blow my mind. I feel like in the beginning, especially in April, we're going to see some of these automatic balls and strikes as they get to know the rules. It might happen. I think umpires try to give as much leeway as possible. They just don't want a hitter stepping out of the box and walking around, fixing his gloves 15 times and then getting in the, in, in, into the box. That's where they'll get hit. I think if they do that, I mean, where you're going to see the, the major problem is, is if a hitter, doesn't like a call by the umpire and he's upset that he called it a strike instead of a ball. If he thinks that he's going to step out of the box and try to prove a point. And then it'll be up to the umpire to make a decision what he wants to do in that aspect. Uh, but the clocks will be all over the park. It'll be one will be behind the catcher so they can see it. Uh, obviously one will probably be, uh, you know, on the sides above the dugouts or something in, in major league parks. But uh, again, I just think guys, overall work at a faster pace and, and understand that now there's also two pickoff attempts allowed if you do a third one and it's not successful then the person advances the base regardless so are we gonna be seeing guys now with 100 stolen bases a year for some of these speedsters is this gonna up the amount of stolen bases what's your gun on that as part of because me so goes along i with have the to look i have to look more into that i did not know that they were implementing that in the major leagues this year uh, with the amount of pickoffs to first base. Um, so I will I will have to look into that. I knew they were doing it in the minor leagues, but I didn't know that that was part of uh, the transition um, into the big leagues. But if that's the case, um, you know, I mean, if you pick over twice and the guy's safe, you know, um, it's not that you can't pick over a third time. It's just you got to make sure you get him. So if a guy wants to take a bigger lead, because he thinks you might not pick over, that might be the case. So, uh, again, we'll have to see how that that plays out, and I'll have to do a little bit more research on that one there to see, uh, you know, how that how that's going to affect a lot of the uh, the big league guys. I'm not ever said sure. I could be wrong, but I understood. And we'll go into rule two with that one with the bigger bases, which I don't get that one either. So, if there's limit on pickoff attempts, plus you got bigger bases. You know, uh, is this simply so guys can steal more bases or what was your thinking on that rule? Yeah, but, I mean, it's uh, to me, it's it, it, it's not much. Right. I, I think it's an inch or two of 18 the base versus being a little 50, bit bigger. 18 versus 15. Yeah. 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 So you got a little bit you got a little bit more space of the bang bang plays where guys might be safe instead of out on a base stolen or an attempted steal. Where it'll put a guy in scoring position and maybe more runs. Uh, you know, it gives more space where guys can put their foot on the base and they don't have to be so, uh, you know, prevents injury somewhat because guys don't aren't tripping over each other's uh, feet if it's only a 15 inch base uh, instead of 18. So again, I think it's going to have some effect. Uh, it's not going to be a, a major deal in my opinion. But uh, it'll be very minimal, but they will make a it, it will help base stealers because think about it. If a base is three inches bigger at first base and three inches bigger at second base, total six inches of less distance that you have to cover. So those bang bang plays might end up being a little bit different. And you also uh, it's 
the way the game has 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 changed, you know, it's funny. It's almost like they're bringing it back full circle in a way because today's fan who's been watching it for the last 10 years doesn't really know about Stone Base Kings the way it used to be, you know, the Ricky Hendersons and the Vince Coleman's of the world. Yes. And it'd be pretty cool to bring Stone Bases back into the sport and seeing what that was because right now, under OBP and everything else, Stone Bases are considered a wasted out, that there's a high probability of loss and very little uh, chance of gain. Whereas now, if there's a real threat of this, like you've done two th- uh, throws, pickoff attempts, plus to a bigger base, there's a higher probability this guy's going to steal base. That changes the whole mindset, I think, for the pitcher, for the batter up uh, trying to uh, advance the runner or trying to slap it and going from first to third. It'll be really interesting to see where this goes. So uh, I- I'm definitely interested to see the. I think that to me is the bigger uh, shift is not as much about the rule change itself as far as what the goal was. And I think they want to bring stolen bases back into the game. And that goes along with, I think, number three now, where Cody Bellinger is uh, dancing to the moon, number one, that he got a contract that was more than the league minimum. He got a nice payday for uh, production for many, many years ago. So he's getting paid on the hope and what he did in the past. But his argument is defensive defensive shifts are gone, so it's going to open up the field for me again. And there's a lot of guys that suffered under uh, hitters under the defensive shift that with this gone now, they're thinking, I'm going to get a lot more hits. What's your take on the defensive shift limits? And are you are for or against this? I think this is the biggest one of the three, in my opinion. I think this is going to be more beneficial for the left-handed hitter than the right-handed hitter, obviously. Uh, I think it's going to be more beneficial for the guys who get shifted more, obviously. Um, and it is going to open up the field. Those line drives that are over the second baseman's head, technically, because now they're going to have to stand on the dirt instead of the grass. Uh, where before you had one guy in the dirt, one guy in short right field, and then the right fielder positioned behind him. So those hard line drives, those hard ground balls, those line drives that would be right over the second baseman's head or one hoppers to the short right fielder or the infielder that's playing in short right field to throw that guy out like a Bellinger or a Poppy would be or any left-handed hitter who obviously pulls the ball and and pulls it in in that direction. So uh, I like it. I think it's going to be beneficial. I think it helps revert the game back to uh, the yesteryears, so to speak, and gets players now to buy into, you know, making contact and hitting the ball all over the field instead of just uh, trying to be a, a pull hitter and letting the numbers be taking away of like this the analytics portion of it that's controlled by the front office uh, to put these players there. I agree with you. I, I I don't mind it at all. I think it's going to be good for the game to watch it this way. I was kind of sick of the shifts. On the other hand, you know, I always said to myself, if a player batter goes up the bat, knowing he's always going to face a shift, he could always work towards working against that, you know, because he, he knows it's coming. So he can definitely, but once you have a certain style of, uh, of, 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 of hitting, it's hard to get away from that. If you're a pull hitter, if you're, you know, depending on where, where you're at in life. And uh, let's see if, if Cody Bellinger is right. Let's see if this brings him back to all-star form. We will see. I mean, only time will tell, and uh, the season will uh, play out, and we'll see how some of these uh, new institutionalized rules uh, will affect the game. I could live with these, and depending on how they go, and they'll see over the next couple of years, they can always tweak them as need be. I told you at the point that they start bringing extra innings, an automatic runner on a base, I have a big problem with that. And if we ever come to the point that we have to end uh, games in extra innings by hitting by home run derbies, the way they have the shootouts in the NHL, uh, I'm done with baseball. Like literally, I'm going to be done at that point. I, I don't care if it takes 25 innings. We are ending this game properly. We're not doing it on home run derbies. I would agree with that. I don't think uh, the home run derby to end baseball games is coming to a park anytime soon thank goodness well stay tuned because spring training is almost upon us everybody we're really excited to hear uh steve is excited uh to be spending time with family and not having to do the grind this year and also the world baseball classic is a world baseball classic is upon us very very shortly so stay tuned we'll have a lot of information on that one so steve my friend my brother always a pleasure thank you for sharing these insights and let's see how the 2023 season plays out with all these new changes Absolutely. Thanks, Jonathan. And go Thunderdogs. Go Thunderdogs.